Howdy friends and viewers, welcome back to another uh, Nerd Venture video. This week we're going to be reviewing a book, um, and it is going to be Fear Agent by Rick Remender, uh, with alternating art by Tony Moore and Jerome O. Pena. So, Fear Agent was a series published um, first by Image, I believe, for a number of issues and through maybe the first arc, and then it moved over to Dark Horse eventually. It is available on these two in these two very lovely oversized hardcover editions. They're they're really big. They are part of the Dark Horse Library Editions line, um, and they are the same size as a DC Absolute, if that means anything to you at all. Uh, I think right around somewhere by like 8 by uh, 12 or something, larger than a regular oversized hardcover, which is 7 by 11. So a pretty good amount of, um, of re real estate, screen space, I don't know what you want to call it, but art space for these things to show off their full uh, size. And they have a really nice binding. They are dust jacket less, as most of Dark Horse's, Dark Horse's library editions are. Some of them are, are not, but... But they do not have a dust jacket. Instead, they have all of their art printed directly on the boards themselves. And what's really amazing about them is they come at the low, low price of $50 suggested retail for both of these books. Which, frankly, is really nice and makes Marvel look like a bunch of asshats, if you ask me. Because... Both of these books are, are $50 retail, and uh, you can probably find them. I picked mine up for $50 for the pair. I would imagine you can find them at different places for around 30 to like low 30s would be something that I'd be comfortable paying for them. And they're just really, really high quality and awesome. I know last video I talked about Dark Horse currently is a little wonky in their identity or, or sort of what they're putting out right now. But what is actually really nice about Dark Horse is their library editions and the way they curate and present their backstories and all of their sort of really seminal works. They do, in my opinion, a better job of almost any company out there. Uh, they have these really nice books, like I was saying, that the library edition is, a, is the standard um, deluxe edition for Dark Horse. And they have a whole suite of these ranging from The Goon they just started putting out. They have uh, Hellboy... Uh, library editions. There's some Sin City. There were some Sin City library ones. They're out of print, but then there's now the, the big damn Sin, Sin City full um, uh, omnibus. Uh, there's the Conan one, the Martha Washington, the Kabuki library is coming out right now. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I think Dark Horse, part of the problem that they're having now is that they're not putting out any new content that is really grabbing people, but what they are doing very well is repackaging and making their evergreen and seminal stories that have been published um, through their imprint r available in these really, really nice editions. And, you know, frankly, for the, for the size, for the content of these, the number of pages uh, and the size and quality of the book itself, $50 is, is such a steal as compared to Marvel books, where if you look at the Hawkeye omnibus that was just released, is probably... Um, half the size in terms of paper quality and uh, thickness and is not as large as this, but it's $100, right? So it's hard to say because Marvel, definitely you're paying a premium for the characters. You know, there's no doubt about that, uh, that, that Marvel basically is has this idea in their minds that you will pay $125 or $100 uh, cover price, or at least that they can ask that cover price because you're reading... The Avengers, or Hawkeye, or Spider-Man, or whatever it is, it's it's a Marvel character that you have an attachment to, and they are banking on the fact that they can charge that amount of money for for that kind of premium content. And I think the, they're right to some extent. Um, there are not as many people who would go in on Fear Agent or Hellboy or any of those books that that are from Dark Horse that don't have the huge following. Even though Hellboy has movies and 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 Sin City has movies. They're still, they're not as widely appealing as many of the Marvel characters. So I think it would be nice to strike some balance in between for Marvel. They have, Dark Horse is really good about if they start with a library edition number one, you know, you're going to get a library edition number two. They're, they're putting out The Goon right now and, and Kabuki. Uh, they did Mass Effect, Dragon Age. There's a bunch of different library editions and they are pretty good about completing that run and keeping them in print all the time. Whereas with Marvel, you see a lot of one-off uh, Omni where it's, 
It'll be there still isn't a second one of the new Avengers from uh, Bendis, and there wasn't another one of Ultimate Spider-Man from Bendis. There might not be another one of of Powers that's coming out. There's only one uh, Silver Surfer on the bus. There, there's a few different places where they seem to start projects, and maybe the sales aren't there for them, so they don't go on to print more in the line. And basically, my point of that is that if they're asking 125 and 100 dollars, the cover, the the jumping in price on that is so steep that if you could think about getting two of these books for that size, or for that same amount of money, you could get two of these hugely oversized books. I would go for it. I would definitely recommend exploring Dark Horse's library editions because I think that they are a much more consumer friendly and cost effective way to get into these things that require no huge continuity backstory and and are really really high quality products in and of themselves so yeah, big thumbs up basically i know this isn't particularly about fear agent itself but big thumbs up from me for dark horse library editions because i think they treat their customers much better than a lot of the other big companies do when it comes to collected editions these are the right price they're the right quality and they collect some awesome stories so i think definitely in my mind dark horse library editions are good place to start collecting Dark Horse or really to start collecting comics if you're sort of new to the collected edition game because it's just a great starting point. So what exactly is Fear Agent itself? Fear Agent is a book that I liked a lot. I really ended up enjoying it and I once I finished the entire story, but I do think that it has a little bit of an identity crisis. Uh, it's not quite exactly what it purports itself to be. If you if you look on the back of the first one, for example, there's this little blurb right up talking about it, and it does something that was, surprises me, which is that, that it drops EC Comics' name right in the back, and which EC Comics, if if those of you that are familiar, and if you're not familiar, it is a it was a comic book publisher that was very dominant in the late 40s, 50s, that published a bunch of different anthology magazines and I really like collecting their stuff and reading it. I have a number of them, Weird Science, Weird um, Fantasy, uh, Tales from the Crypt, Haunt of Horror, Vault of Terror, it, a number of different like Crime Patrols, Two-Fisted Tales, a, a number of different uh, type of short stories. They're mostly collections of eight to ten page uh, short stories. And so in the back of this, it really drops that name and it kind of it gives you this idea of what it's going to be through that. And I'm not sure that it exactly lives up to that. It, it's sort of mixed in its in its in the way it executes that. Partly, I think it does live up to that. And then partly, I think it sidesteps the whole idea of being an EC comic, um, at least in spirit. And it, it kind of confuses itself and hurts itself in that way. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. The creative team on this is really, really strong. You have Rick... I don't know if it's Remender or Remender, so I'm just going to call him Rem Remender. Rick Remender, who is known for uh, Uncanny X-Force, as well as Uncanny Avengers, as well as uh, Fear Agent, is one that, that people really talk about from him. He's written for uh, Marvel a bunch, and his stuff is kind of known for being a little tied up in itself and kind of convoluted, but if you enjoy, but if you get into it, a lot of people love him as a writer. I, I like him as a writer. I think he writes action very, very well. Tony Moore, um, who is the artist on this, one of the artists who was is probably most famous for his first, I believe, six or eight issues of The Walking Dead. I don't, I don't know how long he was on that book, but he was the original artist and creator, co-creator with Robert Kirkman, and his art is fantastic. And then there's also Jerome Opeña, who I don't really know that well. I know he did Uncanny X Force along with Rick uh, Remender. And they have worked together on um, on that book for Marvel, and then it also lists him as in Punisher credits. And I, to be honest, I have not read any of uh, Opeña's Punisher, but I do like his his art in this book. The way this is collected is Volume One collects three short arcs. Well, not really short, normal size arcs: Reignition, My War, and The Last Goodbye. And then Volume Two collects the final three, Hat to Job, Eye Against Eye, Out of Step. If you are familiar with music, you might recognize that these are all names of uh, hardcore albums from the 80s American scene. Hatchet Job, I don't remember. Eye Against Eye is Bad Brains, Out of Step is Minor Threat. My War is Black Flag, I believe. So so there's definitely a, uh, a kind of thematic tie going on in here, which I think is kind of cool. It's a nice little Easter egg. And basically, these the way this works is they have... 
Remender is writing all of these arcs, and then Tony Moore and Opeña and Jerome Opeña are alternating art duties. So it'll be like six issues or six or five or six issues with Tony Moore, and then five or six with Jerome Opeña, and then back to five or six with Tony Moore. And uh, there's a few other times where there are different artists who uh, ink and do layouts. And then apart from these um, main story arcs, there's also, in the end of both of these books, there's these collections called Tales uh, of the Fear Agent, which are basically the backups um, from these books. If you're familiar with the way backups work, usually it's, it's just a smaller story at the end of an issue, either to extend the length or, or just because a creator wants to work on on a different story. So there's a number of backups in here. Some of them are just short stories that Remender wrote, which are canon, and then some of them are sort of just fun, one-off, non-canonical stories from other artists and writers. They are okay. I, the backups are fine. I, I got through all the backups in number one, and then I kind of flipped through and, and read half of the backups in number two. And to, to be honest, once I was done reading the story itself. I, I wasn't really in the mood for the backups. I personally wished that they had done the backup at the end of the issue where it was supposed to go, where it was originally published. So like you would read issue two and then immediately after that in this book there would be issue two's backup. Instead of reading issue one through six and then getting to the end and then reading, you know, backups one through six, it just made the backups feel a little bit, um, inessential and I, I just wasn't that into them at the by the time I got to the end of the books I would rather have it interspersed in which I understand why they did it it creates a more cohesive story when you leave on a cliffhanger or the end of an issue and then you were able to just turn to the next issue and continue reading I get that but for me personally I would have liked it to see uh, to see it interspersed in there <laughs> so now that we're what 10 minutes 13 minutes into this video what the heck is this actually about this book is about an alcoholic redneck Texan alien exterminator in space future named Heath Houston and the cast of characters surrounding him. Heath is the, is the main character and you follow him basically, I believe it's his viewpoint through every issue. I don't, I don't think there's a single issue where he's absent completely, but uh, there's Heath in here, his, his on again, off again, wife slash ex-wife slash always lover, Charlotte, who is a really awesome uh, character, his, a number of his friends are in here, a few other women that he hooks up with through the course of his travels, and then mostly there's kind of different alien species that he interacts with. And so the EC Comics part, what I was saying originally is, Reminder even says it himself, he's, he's putting the, sort of the grit and the, uh, intensity back into sci-fi. He kind of does, does this introduction where he talks about how sci-fi has gotten too esoteric and headspacey, and he wants to, to take it back to the Wally Wood, Jack Davis style stuff where everybody's wearing spacesuits and punching aliens and saving, it's basically sword and sorcery and space, kind of. And so, for some of this, it really does follow along with that. Reminder writes these awesome action scenes, and there are definitely places in here where he is basically doing self-contained stories where you'll see a story where Heath is interacting with a particular alien race and there's, you know, something happens and then it kind of wraps itself up by the end of that. And that's really cool when it's doing that. It works pretty well, I think. He he does a lot of... I'm, I, I'll try not to basically spoil any of the story because it gets very convoluted, but he it does a very good job of introducing these characters and putting Heath in these situations constantly that are fresh and interesting and exciting but then the thing is that it also wants it wants to be this big headspacey sci-fi trip there is so much time travel and playing around with like different versions and the prime version of this character and then going back in time to fix this and then somebody else undoing the fixes that you did and then redoing the fixes that you did. I personally am not the biggest fan of that style of story. Time travel, going back in time to me, always is kind of uh, kitschy and, and really, like I said, convoluted because I feel like you end up explaining yourself away to such an extent that it becomes uninteresting to me. This is just me personally, you know, time travel stories don't, don't do it for me <laughs> that much. I find them to be more off-putting than I do exciting. So, Fear Agent is, was weird to me in the sense that the individual stories and the pieces I enjoyed a lot of, 
And then sort of at the end of these six individual pieces, Reminder will get to a point and be like, oh, all those things that happened, you know, this person was actually there in the background, and this person was actually manipulating this, and actually this person was here, and there was an alternative motive for this the whole time. And so it's, it's frustrating because he, he does these, these pieces that work well on their own, and I don't think they need to be stitched together. I, I think they, they do work well on their own, and they can just be stories. And then he gets to the end, and it's kind of like, well, actually, everything was connected, and everything had to do with this. And when it, when it gets that lattice work, that kind of framework that he's basically shoving into what was there already, it just becomes really tiring and, and not that interesting to me anymore. He kind of undoes a lot of the, the cool stuff that he set up by making it that, you know, at the end of each one of these arcs, you basically realize that this person actually had this motive, or this person was actually this person, or, or this person was that person from the future. And each time it kind of makes you be like, oh, well, why did I do all of those five things in there if it's just going to... Re if we're going to get back to status quo at the end of this arc, it's going to be, well, then there's a new thing to deal with and a new problem to deal with. And it, it just wears itself, for me personally, it wore itself thin by the end. I was just getting tired of, of seeing the same scenes over and over again. That actually happens a lot in here where he will... You'll sort of go over the same couple events in Heath's life, uh, which are sort of pivotal and important events to him, and you see them over and over again from maybe different perspectives, or now everything's a little bit switched because this time travel event happened, or everything's a little bit switched because this person is trying to save this person now. And it's just too much. <laughs> it's, it, it becomes too uh, dragged down by the weight of explaining and creating this whole multi-time travel interdimensional thing it just by the end it was it had to resolve itself in this kind of cheesy way i mean it had to you know you get to the end and and it's sort of one of those time travel things where it's like the 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 main hero has to kind of realize that he can set all of this right if he just goes back to the to the most beginning and and stops it from ever happening and then nobody will ever know he existed but he did his job right because they didn't know all this tragedy had happened so it, Heath is a character that is interesting because of that he sort of internalizes and and carries so much pain and suffering and and expresses it in you know violence and alcoholism and self-loathing He's a really interesting character. In fact, all the characters I, I liked, I really like Charlotte, his wife, and it just all convolutes itself because all of these interesting individual stories, like I said, they, they just, they don't need to be tied together. And when they do get tied together, it's frustrating. It feels like it wants to be two books at the same time. I liked both of the books that it wanted to be, tell, wanted to be but I didn't love either one, if that makes sense. I think if it had really stuck to you know, in my mind, a sort of cowboy bebop structure is what I go to to compare things to, or Mushishi, another animal, uh, anime that I really like. If it had really embraced that structure and had just been 28 completely disconnected, or at least story-wise, maybe thematically connected, but really disconnected kind of instances and stories, I think it would have been really awesome and very strong. Or if it had just been a 28 issue over story basically just one continuous thing i think it would have been really great and really strong because remender has a lot of cool ideas in there but by trying to serve both of these masters it kind of becomes a good version of both of those things and not a great version of either so i i did not find it to be the be all end all of, of science fiction comics my point is that it, it just doesn't it checks a lot of boxes without really committing to one particular method of storytelling, and I think it suffers from it. Having said that, I would still highly, highly recommend picking this up because of the, like I said, content to price point, and also because it's just a really good story and universe that can be digested on its own without any back matter or without any continuity to worry about. You know, if you're somebody who is tired of of reading superhero comics. If, if you're tired of, you know, crossovers and continuity and everything being bogged down in itself, this is a cool place to to uh, start reading because it really does have a smart and very fun world attached to it that you don't have to have any backstory to. I think I underemphasized 
just the sheer joy and fun that you can tell that these creators are having when they're making this. There's, you know, there's raptors with, uh, with jetpacks and there's crazy guns and there's throwbacks to old sci-fi and new sci-fi and, and the, the dialogue is generally very, you know, funny and, uh, and sort of cantankerous in a, in a way that kind of recalls this, uh, this rednecky thing. There's a lot of, um, Samuel Clemens, as he calls him in here, Mark Twain quotes going on. So it, it kind of has this homespun Americana wisdom to it, which is funny. It's, um, it definitely is a very fun, fun read. I don't think it's going to explode your mind with all of the things that he was trying to do, like I said, on both sides. But, but damn, it is just fun. It's just fun. If you just want to read stories about an alien exterminator, you know, getting drunk and throwing up on aliens and then shooting them in the face and then, you know, sleeping with some girl and then realizing the girl's a tentacle monster, whatever it is, you know, like if you want to read that kind of stuff, this is a good place to, <laughs> to get it because because it, it, they are right. And Remender did live up, I think, to some of the claim that that it is sci-fi in an older school way. It's just that when the newer stuff creeps in, it doesn't really work. It doesn't gel that well. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video review. Um, I tried to keep it as spoiler free as possible because, like I said, it, it sort of treads over the same 10-ish events for the entirety of the book. So if I talk about any of them, it's kind of super spoiler, I guess, because it, it all reveals itself over time. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. Give me a comment. Tell me about your thoughts on Fear Agent. Thumbs me up if you uh, liked it. Thumbs me down if you didn't like it. If you, if you notice, I'm wearing the same shirt as last time because I found that this this little pullover has a, a nice little microphone spot, so you might be seeing it more because <laughs> it's really convenient to record with. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you come back to check out next week's video. I have a few other things planned, and pretty soon we'll be getting into the next previews for December. So that'll be exciting to talk about or we can get more into Dark Horse and all that kind of stuff. So I will see you guys next week and I hope you enjoy watching. Thanks.